they're thermophiles. So um, testing a new speaker configuration, um, and it may mean that you will definitely know if the mailman shows up because you'll hear the dog barking and other ambient sounds may intrude. We'll see how it goes. All right, this video is about calculating the heat work and change in internal energy for an adiabatic process. So what adiabatic means means that no heat is allowed to transfer in or out of the system. In theory, this means that the system is perfectly insulated. The reason we care about adiabatic processes, um, one, if you want to extract work from a change in internal energy, then making sure none of it leaks out as heat is the most efficient way to do that. An adiabatic process is going to help us construct the Carnot cycle. And through the Carnot cycle, we'll also learn to calculate the efficiency of heat engines. Adiabatic pathways, along with isothermal, isobar, isobar, and isochoric pathways. If you combine all of those pathways, then you can actually reconstruct uh, uh, all of the engine cycles that I know of. The most important ones being the auto cycle, which describes our gasoline internal combustion engines, the diesel cycle, which describes pressure ignition combustion engines and the Brayton cycle, which we use to describe constant flow turbines. So after we have this adiabatic process, you guys would be able to calculate any different type of engine cycle. I'll also lead, the other reason adiabatic is important is I will lead or just foreshadow the idea that the word adiabatic is synonymous with the word isentropic. I froze because I have lots of feelings about entropy, but I'm just going to have to leave them there for now. All right, so let's start our calculation. Again, we're going to start by drawing a pressure volume diagram. And let's reference our old friend an isothermal process. We'll do compression starting from some state one to some second state. And if you recall, for this isothermal path from state one to state two, we've calculated that the work is equal to negative RT, natural log of the final volume over the initial volume. The volume, the since we're doing compression, volume two is smaller than volume one, so this fraction, the natural log of this fraction is negative. That cancels with this negative, and what we see is that when we do, when we compress a gas, we are doing work on the gas, so energy is flowing into the system in the form of work and it results in an increase in the internal energy. We learned that for an isothermal process that the internal energy change is zero, to a which is true for ideal gases and to a first approximation for real gases, and so heat, heat in case is the negative of work. And since temperature isn't changing, that the heat flow out of the system makes them exactly as the amount of work we're putting into the system. All right, so let's compare this to an adiabatic process. For an adiabatic process, I've defined it as the idea that no heat can flow in or out of the system. 
so if I think about what that means for the internal energy, looking at in, in comparison to our isothermal case, we no longer have heat flowing out of the system while we're, uh, while we're putting work into the system. And so the consequence is that the increase in internal energy that occurs because of the work we're doing to compress the gas is going to go to raise the temperature of the gas. So if I draw an adiabatic process on the same PV diagram as the isothermal process, my final temperature for the second state is going to have to be higher. So let's imagine I compress from the same initial volume to the same final volume. I'm going to end up on some hotter isotherm. So here's my isothermal path, and here's my adiabatic path, but we don't know much about the shape of this pathway. I don't know what this function is. Maybe it looks like the curve I've drawn. Maybe it arcs this way. Maybe it arcs some other way like this. We don't know the shape of this curve, and that's what these calculations are about. I'm going to finish this line of thinking and writing that because we haven't allowed any heat to flow out, but we're compressing a gas, so the amount of energy flowing into the system in the form of work is greater than zero, so we know we have to increase my internal energy, which means we know that there's an increase in temperature, hence why we ended up on this hotter isotherm. All right, so your first activity is going to be to write down an expression for delta W and get as close as you can to solving for W and VM. You may hear here um, I, I pose the question that actually you can't get all the way to solving for W so just progress the equation as far as you can. So I'm going to indicate now that you should pause the video and try this activity. Let me show you, I'm gonna show you this. So, well, the, uh, my, the 11 year old um, built for me this pen holder for my birthday and then got me all of these like beautiful colored pens to put in them. I super appreciate it. I hope you guys, I, I, I wonder how many of you enjoy school supplies as much as I do. All right, so let's pause the video and work on this activity. You pause, I don't pause. Did you pause?